Your word says without me, you can do nothing. So if we ever see things get done, it is because you are there. Thank you for being there all the time. Take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord Jesus a big, big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Would you help me congratulate your neighbor? Happy Liberation Night 2010. Amen. And so it was that whatever name Adam called them, that was the name by which they were called. This is called Liberation Night. And so it carries liberation blessings. So every captivity is turning around here tonight. God is turning around everyone's captivity on this ground here tonight. In the name of Jesus. The liberation mandate is a multifaceted mandate. And among the facets of this mandate is get back home and make my people rich. Without any doubt, Poverty is one of the capital oppressions of the devil. He said, I saw four horns. And I said, what have these come to do? He said, these are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem and Judah so that no one did lift up the head. So there are the horns of the Gentiles, the forces of darkness that sits on people's destiny that afflict with financial misfortunes and hardships. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 to 21. Then I saw four carpenters and I said, what are these come to do? He said, these have come to put back together what the horns of the Gentiles have scattered. Now see, God's agenda of prosperity is real, but the opposition to your access is equally real. That's why God has to send his agents to enforce the recovery of your heritage of abundance. So there are forces unleashed by hell to tie people down in poverty, in penury. And you know poverty stinks. There is nothing glorious about poverty. And he has called us unto glory and virtue. So he hasn't called us unto poverty. He's called us unto plenty. And tonight I believe that aspect of the mandate will open up somebody's destiny to the next phase. Like John the Beloved will say in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1, the things that we have heard, the things that we have seen, the things that our hands have handled, the things we've looked upon and our hands have handled, of the word of life, it is what we are presenting to you. So I'm bringing you into that covenant of financial fortune tonight. And I see you enter in and never get out again. Amen. So nobody believes that is his portion. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen.
And that this aspect of our commission has become the identity of this ministry. Prosperity has become our global identity. Everybody in the world agrees. There is a mystery of financial fortune in this commission. That's why you cannot be part of it and be a victim of financial misfortune. If you will key into what is happening, if you will key into what is happening, Therefore, I'll be speaking tonight on cutting a covenant of financial fortune. Cutting a covenant of financial fortune. And I'll take my text from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 7. Beginning. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee unto a good land, a land of brooks of water and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, wines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive and honey. Verse 9, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, now thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose heels thou mayest dig brass. And when thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments, and his status which I commanded this day, lest when thou art eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, it takes good money to build goodly houses. And when thy hearts and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, that's financial fortune. And all that thou hast is multiplied. Then God forbid that your heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And verse 17, And thou shalt say in thy heart, My power and my might, the might of my hand has gotten me this way. He said, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that give thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which is unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day, you shall surely perish. Now, this scripture establishes God's agenda of financial fortune for his people. A land where you shall eat bread without scarceness, you shall not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of which you dig brass. A land where you will build goodly houses, where your silver and your gold will multiply, and where all that you have will multiply on every side. Now, God is painted for us here a picture of financial fortune as his agenda for his people. And taking that straight to the New Testament, he said, do you think I've come to destroy the laws? And the prophet said, nay, I've not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. So God didn't come to cancel out the Old Testament. No, he came to fulfill them by Christ. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. So the plan and agenda of God for your financial fortune remains intact. It remains what? Intact. And let's see how that happens in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though he was rich, yet for your sake and my sake he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And that he having all sufficiency, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. All sufficiency in all things, abounding unto every good work, distributing lavishly. So God's agenda of financial fortune transcends the Old Testament episode. And then in First Timothy 6 and verse 17 to 19, he said, Charge them that are rich among you, that they be not higher minded, nor trust in certain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us all things richly to enjoy. <laughs> that they do good, that they be rich in good works. Now, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. <laughs> so, they are, that is, God has validated his agenda of financial fortune all the way from the Old to the New Testament. Giving us all things richly to enjoy. And the Bible said that God has given us all things that makes for life and godliness. So you are a candidate for financial fortune. And I think that should get you excited. You are a candidate for financial fortune. Yeah. Let us quickly trace our roots in financial fortune. Because if you don't know your roots, you are likely going to lose. You are sure going to lose your fruits. So the knowledge of your roots is crucial in securing your fruits. That is, let's go search out our roots in financial fortune. One in the Abrahamic covenant. I'm going to bless you and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And everyone that is born again is a seed of Abraham by faith. Genesis, I mean, Galatians chapter 3. And verse 28 and 29. Every child of God is a seed of Abraham. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither born nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed. Verse 29. And he has according to the promise. So everyone that belongs to Christ is Abraham's seed. And if the word says that in thy seed shall all the families, all the nations of the earth be blessed in Genesis 22 verse 18, 
That means you are a blessing to the nations of the world. You are not a concern. You are not a burden. You are a blessing. That means the nations of the world will be imparted by the fortunes of your life. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. So you have a root of financial fortune in the Abrahamic covenant. Think of the man called Isaac. He went forward, he was strong, he became very great, and the Philistines envied him. Genesis 26, verse 12 to 14. And the Bible says, we brethren as Isaac, we are children of promise. Galatians 4, 28. So every child of God has access to the covenant blessings of Abraham, just like Isaac. That means you are to be envied, not to be pitied. And I mean, God is going to turn your story into the envy of your world. When God turns your captivity, you are like them that dream. Then they'll begin to talk about you among the heathen. The Lord has done great things for them. You have the same level of access that Isaac had into Abraham's blessing. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law by being made the cause for over it is written, because everyone that hanged upon the tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come to us who are Gentiles, and we might obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So everyone that is born again has access to the blessings of the Abrahamic covenant. And that is the, among other things, the blessing of financial fortune. Abraham was so blessed that he built a private army. Abraham was a nation in one man. He had 318 men in his army. I don't know what the population of the world would be that time, maybe about 2,000. So Abraham was the biggest employer of labor. I see new generation Abrahams arising from this service tonight. That looks like you let me hear your loudest amen. Also, you have a root of financial fortune in the law. And that's what we read earlier on from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 7 all the way down. You have a root of financial fortune in the law. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 7 all the way down to 9, I mean to 11. And you have it also in Job chapter 22, verse 21 all the way to 29. Remember I said, receive, I pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you'll be built up. Then you shall lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have what? Plenty of silver. So you have a root of financial fortune in the law. So when you align with the demands of the law, you are launched into a world of financial fortune. You are launched into a world of financial fortune. You are launched into a world of financial fortune. Then number three, you have a root of financial fortune in redemption. Remember, he was slain to receive for us power, riches, wisdom, Revelation 5.12. So redemption delivered for us riches, among other things, to receive for us power and riches and wisdom 
and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Romans 15 verse 29. We talk about the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. I'm sure that when I come unto you, I will come in the fullness of the gospel of Christ. So the gospel is pregnant with blessings. Glory to God. The fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ, which includes power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Fullness. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, that with his poverty might be made rich. So we have a root of financial fortune in redemption. We have a root of financial fortune in redemption. And number four, we have a root of financial fortune in the prophetic. Who among you today saw the glory of this house in his first estate? And now do you compare it now? Is it not to you as compared to not? But I say unto you, the glory of this little house shall be greater than the former. The gold is mine, and the silver is mine, said the Lord. Haggai, chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. You have a root of financial fortune in the prophetic. As a later day said, the glory of this later house shall be greater than the former, said the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. So God has a reserve of silver and gold for the end time. So the financial fortune of the end time will be far above what has ever been experienced in the history of creation. Glory to God. He said, in that day when I make up my jewels, they shall be mine. And I will spare them as a man spare his own son that serve them. Then shall you return and desire between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serve God and him that serve him not. For it shall come to pass that the whole earth shall burn like an oven. He's talking about the end time. That means there is a reserve for financial fortune for the end time. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, and then chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. So that is a reserve of financial fortune for the end time. Can I hear your amen? It shall come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains. I shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. That is the fortune of God in the church. We humble the pride of the world. That's the meaning. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. So you have a root of financial fortune in the prophetic. What I tell you in the secret shout on the house top. And the Bible said, the voice of a poor man is not heard, and his wisdom is despised. That means God will give the church a voice by financial fortune yes, yes, before yes. he returns. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, it's already happened. God is poised to give a voice to his church. Among other things, by financial fortune, by imparting financial fortune on the church. So they can shout on the housetop the gospel of salvation. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? That's your root. And an understanding of your roots empowers you to command your fruits. You have a root of financial fortune in God. Can I hear your amen? amen? Can I hear your amen? amen? But the Bible said, labor not to be rich. That means there must be an access to this fortune that must be discovered for anyone who desires to be there. 
Proverbs 23, verse 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from your own wisdom. That means your labor is no guaranteed access. So you better find out how to get there. You know, it talks about, and be ye not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promises. Not who through hard work and skill, who through faith. So your access is absolutely spiritual. Your access to this financial fortune is absolutely spiritual. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. And be ye not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience obtain, inherit the promises through faith and patience, not through hard work and skill, not through human connections. Not through schemes, human schemes, and playing out fellows in businesses. For it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. And he has no sorrow for it. So, so labor not to be rich means labor to be blessed and you'll be enriched. Labor to be what? Blessed and you'll be enriched. So financial fortune is only accessible by the blessings of the Lord. So what we need is to labor to assess the blessings. And then the riches come in as evidences of the blessing. Labor not to be rich, cease from thy own wisdom. <laughs> that is... Take on my wisdom. My wisdom is your access to my riches, not your wisdom. Get thee out of your father's house from thy kindred to a land that I will show you. That's where your fortune is. Don't stay with your wisdom. Buy up my wisdom. Buy into my wisdom. My wisdom is your access to my financial fortune agenda. You cannot assess my financial fortune agenda in your wisdom. It has to be in my wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And it's very important for us to understand, therefore, that true spirituality is what sets the pace for all around prosperity. True spirituality. True spirituality. Mm. It is impossible for a disconnected branch to flourish. Every branch of a tree that flourishes, flourish by sustainable connectivity to the tree. Every branch. That's why in all of the scriptures that point to the highway to financial fortune, talks about return. 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 Let's check four of them. So until you return, you cannot be restored to financial fortune. Until you return back to God. It's a return that guarantees a restore. Is somebody still awake? Job 22 and verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, ah, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Now, then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have what? Plenty. So a return is fundamental to your restoration. 
You cannot be restored to financial fortune until you truly return back to God and put away iniquity from thy tabernacles. You stop playing financial games. If thou return, so it's conditional. So for you to assess financial fortune, there must be a truthful return. You must return. You must return before you can be restored. You must return. Now, in 2 Chronicles 15, when the prophet came on the stage to prophesy the restoration of God's blessing to the people, the Bible said, and when they in their trouble did turn, 2 Chronicles 15, 4, to the Lord God of their fathers, he was fond of them. They returned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him. They returned back to God and then he restored them back to dignity. Come on now. It has to be a return. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 7. Return unto me and I will return unto you. So until you return, you cannot be restored. So it is your spirituality that sets the pace for your all-round blessing. This is so important. Blessed is the man that feareth God, that greatly delights himself in his commandments. His seed shall also be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Uh. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. The blessed man is the spiritual man. And one of the proofs of the blessing is wealth and riches is in his house. Blessed is the man that feared God, that greatly delights himself in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon her, the generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure it forever. I pray today. For financial sanctification. For everyone under this prophetic anointing. Abraham said, I'm not going to take a thread from you lest you say you make Abraham rich. Everyone that desires access to divine financial fortune must stay off any form of gimmicks cannot be part of bribery and corruption they cannot assess it that way and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles this ministry has never given a dime to buy favor since inception we would rather lose a thing than cut corner to get it And people who have had an encounter with us will tell you that they are dangerous people. If you mention it once you are dead, I will pursue you to your father's house. <laughs> you cannot assess it on your terms. Every divine provision can only be assessed on God's terms. Job was a man that feared God and eschewed evil, a perfect man. And that man became the greatest of all men in the East. Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. So financial fortune has a spiritual root in the life of Job. And this man called Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and Cyrus. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 28. And Daniel 
purpose in his heart not to defy himself and they could not find anything against him except against the law of his god and this man daniel prospered in the reign of dario dairos and cyrus access to financial fortune demands high level spirituality high level spirituality the covenant of financial fortune is not a game is a work walk with me and be thou perfect that's what god said to abraham it's not a game neither is it a trade it's a work is the quality of your work with god that defines the largeness of your assets the expanse of your assets thank you jesus glory to god thank you jesus tonight somebody is breaking loose finally if that looks like you let me hear your loudest amen It is therefore obedience of faith that we engage in cutting a covenant with God. Say with me, obedience of faith. Obedience of faith is what we engage, is the weapon we engage in cutting a covenant with God. The covenant of circumcision requires that you get a knife and remove the false king of every male child. So that knife is obedience of faith. What is it? Obedience of faith. Abraham, our covenant father, proved it. That every time he moved in obedience by faith, he committed God's integrity. Can I hear your amen? Uh -huh. So obedience of faith is the weapon we engage in cutting a covenant with God. Obedience of faith. Get thee out of that country. And so Abraham departed. Circumcise every male born. Now, you see, the Bible said the self same day that God told him. Uh -uh. Genesis 17, verse 23. Self same day. Self same day. Now, chapter 22 of Genesis, Abraham rose up early in the morning. He told him in the night, he rose up early in the morning. Obedience of faith is the weapon we engage in cutting a covenant with God. Obedience of faith is the weapon we engage in cutting a covenant with God. Obedience of faith. So don't, he said, be ye doers of the word, therefore not hear us only deceiving your own self. The word does not deliver its blessings without your obedience. Obedience of faith. He said, Abraham was justified when he took Isaac to the altar. You see how work, how by work, faith is perfected. So it is obedience that validates, authenticates your faith. <laughs> James chapter 2, verse 17 to 24. A covenant is a spiritual platform for committing God's integrity to make good his promises. We commit God's integrity to make good his promise by engaging in obedience of faith to the terms of the covenant. A covenant is a spiritual platform for committing God's integrity to make good his promise. My covenant will I not break nor alter the things that is gone forth out of my lips. So, cutting a covenant with God is therefore a form of spiritual initiation into divine blessings cutting a covenant with god is therefore a form of spiritual initiation into divine blessings the Tarot 28 and verse 1 to 13 if thou will diligently hearken 
to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all that I command thee this day that the Lord your God will set you up on high above all nations of the earth. Huh? And all these blessings will come on thee and overtake thee if thou hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. So cutting a covenant with God or engaging in obedience of faith to the terms of the covenant is what launches you into the world of divine fortune. All kinds. May you receive that grace today. To line up with the things that make for your peace. So you can have the best of time on the earth. And see enjoy eternity with God in heaven. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Only the spiritual can enjoy spiritual blessings. I'm sure you agree with that. There is no training you can give to a chimpanzee to buy a property. He cannot build a house. He can never ride a car because he has no access to human blessings. In the same vein, only spiritual men can enjoy divine blessings. They have to exercise themselves rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise promises little, but godliness promises more unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. It's very important for us to know we don't have any choice. If you want to enjoy divine blessings, be spiritual. Cutting a covenant with God is no joke. It's hard work. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verses 17, I mean verse 7 and 8, we saw how the people responded. Uh, what the prophet says, said, be strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Come and say work. Uh -huh. For your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin. Come and say hard work. Now, verse 12, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their father. It's hard work. They put away all abominable things so they can accept the honorable blessings. They talk and work together. The two can work together. He removed his mother from being queen. It's hard work. Let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And the Lord gave them rest round about. That's what we are entering into now. Amen. We had a meeting recently, and I was telling my associates, I said, you see, God has given me rest from all my enemies. I just am rested, spirit, soul, and body. My finger knees are rested. My feet is rested. My mind is rested. I mean, <laughs> a time comes in your life when the Lord gives you rest from all concerns. That time has finally come for you. They entered into that said, Who shall not see God? Must be put to death. Whether well, small or great, that's a lot of work. You can't enter into that covenant with abominable things hanging around in your life. You are still collecting bribes. Which kind of covenant are you entering into? No, you are entering into courtism. The covenant demands that you put away all abominable things. 
that will corrupt the covenant. Somebody is blessed. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. It is not the goodwill of people. It is not the gratifications from people. One woman walked up to me in 1987, came from Switzerland, and said she, was, she had plenty of troubles. Please pray for me. I'll give you something. Ah. You can picture what happened. The lion roared. I said, if you are not blind, you know I'm far better place than you are. And you know how far better I was. I'll never take a dime for anything I'm giving to give to you. For freely I've received, freely I've been asked to give. I'll never charge for the gospel till I die. Because it will corrupt the covenant. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. I was ministering to a president sometimes, and he said, what exactly do you want? Anything you want, just name it. I smile. I said, never. I don't need nothing from anybody here. My things come from there. And has never faith coming. Has never, never faith coming. Whatever corrupts the covenant, stay from it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've run around a lot of times for this nation, many, many times, and flew several, several times, but never needed a dime from anyone for my movement because I didn't borrow to move anywhere. The reason why many are suffering financial misfortune is because they have not let go of the abominable things. You can't enter into this covenant of sanctity with abominable things hanging around you. Somebody's free right now. I believe your time has finally come. If that looks like you, let me hear your loudest amen. The gospel of Christ is pregnant with blessings, like we read it in Romans 15, 29. But everyone has to work out his portion. Philippians 2, 12. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And it talks about obedience. It is your level of obedience that defines the limits of your portion. Your portion is obedience limited. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So your level of obedience is what defines your own portion of that blessing. Cotton. A covenant of financial fortune. Cutting a covenant of financial fortune. Every kingdom treasure is hidden in the earth. Just like natural treasures are hidden in the earth, you don't find oil crude oil, five meters into the ground. No, you have thousands of meters and hundreds of kilometers to assess them. Everything treasurable is hidden somewhere. In Matthew 13 verse 44, he said the kingdom of God is like a man who has found a treasure. He is like a, a treasure hid in a field, which when a man has found, he hid it, and for joy thereof, 
went and went and selleth all that he has and buyeth it. It's a treasure. I'll show you a few things here. Because every kingdom star is made by divine secrets. Access to divine secrets is the maker of every kingdom star. Access to divine secrets. You see, Job said, as it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God, Job 29 verse 3, was upon my tabernacle, the secret of God was what launched Job into that realm of financial fortune. The secret of God, the secret of God, the secret of God, the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. I washed my feet with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil and so on and so forth. You entered into financial fortune by divine secret. By divine secret. By divine secret. Um, when the secret was revealed unto Joseph, it catapulted him from the prison to the palace. Divine secrets. Is the maker of every star in the kingdom. He said, as much as God has shown you all this, what God showed Joseph made him a show. When God shows you a divine secret, he brings out your star. Daniel chapter 2, verse 16 to 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the ninth season. And that secret made a star out of Daniel. A captain out of a captive. The secret. Divine secret. Divine secret. The maker of every star in the kingdom. The maker of every star in the kingdom. The maker of every star in the kingdom. Now, hear me now. March 22, 1982, the Lord gave me access to the secret that launches men into realms of financial fortune. I went searching for it. Let me say this to you that you are in class does not guarantee success in exams. You need to understand what's going on there. Nobody can study for you. Can anybody study for you? You can't use what somebody says no to pass an exam, can you? So the reason why many are stagnant, stagnated in church is that they are not making no moves. They are not driving themselves to find the solutions to their bugging questions. They are not. It says study. As a workman that would not be ashamed, that does not want to be ashamed, study. That means go on a diligent search, not read. The word study connotes diligent search. A diligent search. Get out on a diligent search. Get out on a diligent search. So you will not be ashamed. Rightly apply yourself to the demands of the truth. Go find it. Then engage it. And then you are free. And the Lord said to me. Now you see, I have read that book a few times. I bought that book some years before that time. And I think I've read it about four times. But I've not found it. Those who fail exams, it's not that they have not read it. They didn't understand it. So you read until you understand it. Then you can write the exam and pass. You can write the exam and pass. So I found it. I knew when I found it, I stood up and screamed, Yay! I can never be poor. This is 2010. Poverty and me don't live in the same city. That was the day we divorced. I saw financial fortune as my heritage by discovering the gateway to it. The word came very powerfully and I drop it for you before we close this session. He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well, that he may establish for you the covenant and the strength of thy fathers as it is this day. What? Covenant? He said, yes. My prosperity plan does not answer to prayers. It has no respect for fasting. It answers only to covenant practice. Until your part is played, I'm not committed. Sure, I have a part to play. Our own time was a praying era. 
everything by prayer. So many people fail exams because everything by prayers. And they say, what? How valid is this covenant? I said, my covenant be not with the day and with the night. If I'm not upon the ordinance of heaven, then may also my covenant with my servant they be broken. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 to 25. What? What then is the covenant? Why the earth remaineth? Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Now, the secret that Job discovered was the secret of seed time and harvest. Nothing else. So he began distributing. He began worshipping God and offering sacrifices every day. Jeremiah Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. He was offering sacrifices every day. He was giving to the poor tirelessly. Then he was launched into a realm of financial fortune. i tell you something. Not the fact. Somebody's destiny is changing now. Somebody's destiny is changing now. If that looks like you, let me hear your loudest amen. 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 The covenant of seed, time, and harvest is what empowers a man for financial fortune. That is what empowers you for financial fortune. The covenant of seed, time, and harvest, which remains operational as long as we remain on this earth. It remains operational as long as we remain on this earth. And that covenant expresses itself in several channels. It has several outlets through which it's given expression. Remember, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and neither water they shall himself what? Be watered unto. Abraham was a spiritual man. You all agree with that? Because he was hearing God per second, per second. And it takes a man of the spirit to hear from heaven. Amen? I was in the spirit, then I heard. Abraham was a spiritual man. Huh? Abraham was a liberal man. He gave freely to Lot. Take anything you want, and I take the remaining. Abraham was a tither. And that's one anchor trigger of financial fortune. I must emphasize that here with all vehemence. Jesus placed a seal on it in Matthew 23 and verse 23. You pay the tithe of anise and cumin and you have neglected the heavier matter of the law. This ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. So tithing is sealed by Christ. But that it should be done on a spiritual platform. Can I hear your amen? It's so important that the Bible said, there in heaven he receives tithes. Hebrews 7 and verse 8. There he receives tithe. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't think that financial fortune is possible without tithing. I don't think so. And let me tell you why I said so. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing until there be not enough room to receive it. Come and say fortune. fortune. Now, that's Malachi 3.10. Now, 
Prove me now with your tight and watch how I launch you into the realms of financial fortune. Prove me now with your tight and watch how I launch you into the realms of financial fortune. Friends, that's my assets. That's the assets of this commission with inexplainable economic power. This place is dangerous. That's how we got here. Prove me now. I don't care how smart you are. Prove me now. There are many poor ministers in America and Europe everywhere begging, screaming. Prove me now. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, where you live is irrelevant. Prove me now. It's your tide. Lako Shagarada so played. Reko Sanglarada Bayatu Zene. Now, now, I know that this commission is ordained by God as a bad place for new generation Abraham. So I, I know if you can catch what you are receiving now with faith. That's the way it works. Prove me now. If I will not open the window and pour you out a blessing until there be nothing of room, that's financial fortune. Then shall you return and desire between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serve God and him that serve him not. Verse 18. That's financial fortune. For behold, the whole earth will burn like an oven, and all the proud and that do again shall be stubborn. The day that comes upon them, leaving them with neither root nor branch. But upon you that operates on this frequency shall the sun of righteousness arise with healings in his wings. You shall grow up and be going forth where others are dying as cast out of their stores. Malachi 4 1 to 3. Now you see, that means it's so important for you to know which is the master key. Tithe or tithing is the master key to a world of financial fortune. Don D. Rockefeller passed on in 1937 and lives on today as if he's still in one street in America. John D. Rockefeller is one of the contemporary proofs of the validity of tithing as a launching pad into the realms of financial fortune. From the first paycheck he earned in his life, he tithed until the day of his death. He was the first American billionaire that lived. He was a tight made billionaire. Tight what? He was a tight made billionaire. <laughs> he was a tight made billionaire. And there are people here today who look so ordinary. But God has ordained you to operate in the realm of financial fortune, the kind that the world has never seen before. And I must tell you this, the church of Christ has never seen before what's happening in our church today. I mean, that with all sense of humility. With all sense of humility, it is, there is no explanation other than an open heaven theology. There is no scientific explanation. It's nothing but an open heaven theology. From 82 till date, I've never failed in my titan once. Tight has nothing to do with full volume. It's a tenth of what you have. You have ten error. One tight is, tight is one error. So there is no charge. <laughs> so when we had 18,600 as total income for the year, my tight was there. Somebody's fortune is changing. You know. So, tithe 
saying is not a theological strategy for supporting church business. It's not a theological strategy for supporting ministries. Tithing is a covenant channel for launching you into your own realm of financial fortune. It has nothing to do with church or ministry. It has to do with you. Here men that die, he received tithe, but there he received them. There, he. So it's not church receiving your tithe, it's Jesus receiving them. And he said, prove me now. I will open you the windows of heaven. I have the key. The key is not in the hand of your pastor. I will open it to those who approve me consistently with their tithing. Thank you, Jesus. Eighty-seven, our church launched into that realm by revelation. And I tell you, 2010, our definition is financial fortune. The definition of this ministry today is what? Where nations are appealing to us to help, that's financial fortune. Not to pray to help. I mean nations, I don't mean local government. I sat in one of those countries and they were appealing to us for about two hours. I said, look, I think before I talk, we consider what you're asking for. Please give me a word. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We plan. Amen. But I can tell you something. We've been intervening in most nations of this world today by divine favor. The time when the world needs the church has come. Hallelujah. And because we are part of the church, the time your world will need you has finally come. As I close, one of those great ministries very close to us was asking me one day, he came to visit and then we went to Covenant University, construction was still going on. He said, please tell me the secret of the financial, the secret of financial empowerment of this ministry. I said, you will not like it if I tell you. He said, ah, no, I will like it. I mean, I can't be asking a question I'm not interested in. I said, you will not like it. I want to warn you first. He said, I will like it. Then I asked him, does your church pay tight uh, I said but I told you before you will not like it I told you you will not like it. this small church is a tightened church but we tight into this size and we are tight into the next size we tight into this size and we are tight into the next level Friend, that's how we come out How do you explain a church that is spending billions without now people let's take an offering? Massive fence construction is going on now. There is nobody who knows. Other than when it's finished, we just drive around and say, Come, let's see the fence that God has built. Now, Landmark is another city. 1,400 acres of property with roads, drains, central street lighting, you know, faculty buildings, staff housing going on, you know, halls of residence for students, a multi-purpose hall, everything. I mean, and all we are doing here is just laughing. Don't you see God is a good God? That's how things will be happening in your life without strength. Somebody excited, shout hallelujah! Can I say this in closing? That Titan is the covenant master key to a world of financial fortune. 
Tithing is the covenant master key to a world of financial fortune until you set to the question of tithing you are not a candidate for financial fortune so it's left to you both as individuals as companies and corporations that is what you are giving as investment notwithstanding John D. Rockefeller gave 80 million dollars to the Baptist College that became a world-class university. He gave 125 million dollars for sanitation thing to clear the environment. <laughs> he was just dishing out and dishing out. And up till now, even after his death, his foundation is still dishing out in solving major problems around the world. Because whatever the Lord doeth shall be for all the pseudo richest people in Nigeria, rich people in Nigeria of yesterday, where are they now? Children are beggars. Houses are sold. <laughs> but whatever the Lord doeth, it shall be. He said the generation of the oppressed shall be blessed. He said wealth and riches shall remain in their house. Because it, the blessings came from God. The blessing of Abraham is still speaking in Israel today. The blessing of God on your life will still be speaking in your children's children if Jesus started. That is the master key. I do pray that each one will take this as seriously as it has been delivered. Your tithe is not a religious donation, but rather a spiritual transaction that launches you into the realm of financial fortune. Your tithing is not helping a church, supporting a ministry. It is helping to secure your destiny of financial fortune in Christ. That's the way it works. Cutting a covenant of financial fortune. Engaging the weapon of obedience of faith. Recognizing that that access is guaranteed by the covenant of seed time and harvest. And above all, tithing is a covenant master key into the realm of financial fortune. Abraham engaged it, and others engaged it to enjoy all of the fortunes that came their way. And I do believe you are the next on the line. Yeah. How many want to see heaven so open over them? Rise to your feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. I will pour you out a blessing until you will not have enough room to receive it. Pour you out a blessing beyond what you can easily accommodate. I will pour you overflow of my blessings. And the blessings of the Lord, it make it rich and it adds no sorrow with it. And it does not only stop with you, it continues to generations after you. Lift up your hands and thank God for your root of financial fortune. Thank God for your root of financial fortune.
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. And here are men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is written that he liveth. Hallelujah. No matter what goes on on earth, when the heaven is open, it takes care of it. Open heaven is superior to all economic climates on the earth. When the heaven is open, all economic forces on the earth is under arrest. <laughs> this economic downturn, this global economic downturn, you will never smell it in your family. You will never smell this in your family. All the tithing saints in this great commission, lift up your two hands. All the ones who desire to join the Titan army, <laughs> lift up those two hands to heaven. And now begin to receive grace for continuity, everybody. Receive grace for continuity. Grace for continuity, receive it now. Receive that now in the name of Jesus. Everyone who desires to assess the realms of financial fortune that Christ has provided by his death and resurrection, grace to engage this divine secret in order to enjoy the fullness of this blessing. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. I pray today that every abominable thing that is corrupting the covenant in anyone's life, grace to pull them away. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Please get seated. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. Except a man is born again, he cannot benefit of the blessings of the kingdom. Jesus therefore said, you must be born again. And I better warn you and let you know this, that the church is taking the stage in this end time. The Jesus people, they are going to take the stage in all areas of human endeavor. You better join this chariot. It's a colorful chariot. It's an enviable chariot. All wise men should locate it and be a part of it. Wherever you are today, you are not born again yet. In all of our viewing centers around the world, across the length and breadth of Nigeria, and in the nations of the world, you want to be part of this glorious end time army that will be flying in financial colors and still enjoy eternity in heaven with Christ, please stand to your feet and let me pray with you. Everyone that wants to give his life to Jesus today, everyone that wants to be born again and become a child of God,
Please stand to your feet wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Outside and inside, everyone that wants to be born again and be part of this glorious trail, please stand to your feet. God bless you as you stand. God bless you as you stand. God bless you as you stand. There are also people here tonight who want to reconnect back to God, want to rededicate their lives back to Jesus. You know you are once saved, but somehow you walked away. And tonight, God brought you particularly because he desires to welcome you back home. Everyone who wants to rededicate his life to Christ at the same time, stand to your feet wherever you are. I pray for the two groups at the same time. You want to dedicate your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet. You can't be one leg in Christ and one leg in the native doctor's house. You can't. No. You can't be playing pranks on the street and playing holy in the church. No. Everyone that wants to be part of this glorious army by being saved today or by being by dedicating your life to Christ, please stand to your feet at the same time and I'll be praying for the two groups together. Glory to God. Amen. Everyone standing, can I please request that you come towards the eyes and come down towards the altar area. From outside, inside, please come straight on to the front. In all of our viewing centers, everyone giving their life to Christ today, everyone dedicating their life to Christ, please pull out quickly and let's pray with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Choir, please stand and praise his name while they are coming. Everyone in front of me, please request that you bow your heads in prayers. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God and pray this prayer of faith from the depth of your heart. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud and clear. I accept you tonight as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me on the third day you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe I am forgiven, I'm justified, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now I pray with you. Lord Jesus, your grace has brought these precious people. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered until the day of his appearing. Receive grace to run this race successfully to the end. In Jesus' precious name, you are blessed. Please fill out your new Converse data card. And thank him for giving, putting the master key in your hand tonight. Thank him for giving you grace to hold that key and keep it the remaining days of your life. You are winning this race with faith and patience. You are winning this race with faith and patience. Every financial stress in your life, in your family, in your business, in your career, it's over forever. No more groaning. No more crying. In the name of Jesus. I decree that God's wisdom unfolded to you tonight. We take you to your next level. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. And you may be seated. You have been watching Bishop David Oyedebo expound the word of God in simplicity and power. May the words you have, you have heard work for you as you begin to do them in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe this message has indeed blessed you. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and let's grow together. Also like this video and share it to your friends. Be blessed as you